Bioidentical, what do we mean by bioidentical hormones? Hormones are hormones, they, they would say, right? Well, no. This term came about because the pharmaceuticals that were initially used in hormone therapy were um, hormones that they were called conjugated estrogens and um, progestogens, P-R, progest, D-E-S-T-O-G-E-N-S, progestogen, not progesterone. So these were the initial hormones, and these were hormones that were made from synthetics. Actually, Primarin, as most people know, is made from pregnant mare's urine. And then um, progesterone is, is just a synthesized hormone. I'm not sure where it's made from, actually. But, it, but it's a synthetic. And so these were the only hormones that were available initially before we developed the ability to actually um, make hormones from products, you develop the technology to do this. So that, those were the hormones that were used in all the initial studies were these synthetic hormones. So bioidentical simply means that the hormone is biologically identical to the one that your body makes. And that's how they make these hormones. The same thing happened with insulin. We used to take insulin from, um, um, from pigs, and that was the insulin that was given to people because we couldn't, we didn't know how to synthesize insulin. But then, when they began, when that technology was developed, they began to make humulin, and that insulin is now bioidentical to the insulin that your body makes. So that, so bioidentical simply means absolutely biologically identical to the hormones that your body creates. For many women. Perimenopause can, be, can begin in your 30s. And so I would say for, for women um, in, from your 30s on, if you're interested in bioidentical, that's when you should start to investigate bioidentical hormones because some women do go through menopause very early. And I think the vast majority of women began to have fluctuations in hormones beginning in their mid 30s. So, um, so that would be a time to investigate, again, once again, investigate bioidentical hormones. Symptoms include heavy menses, um, your, your periods may become, they may become lighter, but they may become very heavy. Fibroids begin to develop during that, that period. And there are other treatments for fibroids besides surgery. Fibroids can be manipulated with hormones fairly effectively. So, um, so and then uh, again, um, um, changes in mood, uh, changes in mood, depression, uh, apathy, a lot of those things go along with your hormonal change during, during perimenopause. So, um, and then by the time a woman's periods have stopped, Usually, she knows she's interested in bioidentical hormones, but um, in general, the earlier hormones are started, the better. Because if you wait too long, if you, if you go through menopause and then at age 60 you decide you want to do bioidentical hormones, it's a little, it's a little bit more difficult because your, your body has sort of adjusted and it can be a little, a little trickier to introduce those hormones and you have to be careful also because women during that age 50 to 60, they're at higher risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So I think that um, I would say as far as age, start thinking about bioidentical hormones in your mid 30s and do it before 60. If you're going to do bioidentical hormones, it's probably best to start them early. So if a woman is interested in bioidentical hormone therapy, the, the first thing we need to know is, is she still having a menstrual cycle? And if she is, then there are various ways to look at her, her hormone imbalances. You can look at saliva protocols. That can be very helpful. It gives you a little bit a better picture of um, the sort of total body stores of hormones. You can also do a, um, a a saliva protocol looking at the entire monthly cycle where you take a over that period of 28 days you take about 12 to 15 saliva samples and you can actually get a picture of what the hormones are doing throughout the entire cycle and that can be very helpful in women who are still having a menstrual cycle. Uh, you can also
So do blood draws. You can do it on a certain day. But frequently women in peri who are in perimenopause may be having um, their cycles may be irregular, they may be long and short, so you may, that's not as good in looking at the perimenopausal woman because unless, unless her cycles are very regular, just doing it on one single day is, is not perfect. It can give you an idea. But um, in general, you look at the um, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, these are all hormones that need to be looked at when you're begin, beginning to think about a, um, a horm to supplement with bioidentical hormones. And then, then the woman who is postmenopausal, it's pretty simple. If you're not no longer having cycles, you can just do a simple blood draw and uh, pretty much know where the hormone levels are. Um, and then um, for men, actually, it's pretty simple. It's just a blood draw. You don't really, you don't really need to do saliva panels in men, but you do need to look at DHEA. And there are other metabolites of testosterone that sometimes we do look at, but not always initially. Uh, some can be very important looking at uh, DHT, which is thought to be associated with increased risk for prostate cancer. And then uh, androstenedione dione is another metabolite of testosterone, which can give us some clues as to what the most appropriate therapy might be. Memory loss is directly related to hormone decline. Estrogen, um, there, it, it's not just the estrogen decline, although that plays a big role. Estrogen and the other hormones, but estrogen in particular affects neurotransmitters. And as estrogen falls, so do the neurotransmitters, and particularly serotonin uh, and acetylcholine, which are very much involved in um, memory and um, um, cognition and that sort of ability to, um, to remember things immediately. The medical profession is probably, I think there's different camps of um, the dangers of hormone therapy. The, the studies that were done back in, the back in the 80s and 90s were done with synthetic hormones. They were done primarily with Primarin and Provera. And you have to go back and really look at these studies in detail and very carefully to, to get a clear picture of what, what ha what's happening. So from those studies, basically, what he here's, here's just a brief sort of synopsis. So synthetic hormones, particularly progestins, increase the risk for cardiovascular de disease for, and for breast cancer um, over time. In the, the Nurses Health Study, which was started in the 80s and is still ongoing, it's one of the largest studies of ongoing um, women. And in that study, the initial analysis, almost 70% of the women took only Primarin. They did not take progestin. So when you go back and that, and that nurse's health study precipitated the Women's Health Initiative, which was to answer all the questions. However, it was a very poor study. But what happened in the Nurses' Health Initiative was there was, a, there was almost a 50% reduction in cardiovascular disease. Well, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of, uh, of women and men, but in the United States. So this was a huge deal. There was this huge reduction in cardiovascular disease. And th so they, the thing was that, oh, well, that's fabulous. Hormones are going to prevent cardiovascular disease. And everybody started getting Primarin and Provera. But that was the mistake we made. Because it, when you, as I said, when you go back and look at that study, almost 70% of the women did not get Provera. So along comes the Women's Health Initiative, and um, they, they got estrogen, they got uh, Primarin and Provera. And lo and behold, um, these women had increased risk for cardiovascular events, not just cardiovascular disease, um, and they also had increased risk for breast cancer. And then that study gets broken down um, as well, but the bottom line is, is that when you when you look at those two studies, and then there's some studies from Europe, estrogen alone, whether it's Primarin synthetic estrogen, whether it's um, topical estrogen, whether it's oral estradiol bioidentical, estrogen alone, when given alone, there's a slightly increased risk for breast cancer, 
that probably begins to appear around 10 years. This came out of the Women's Health Initiative too. So estrogen alone will slightly increase the risk for breast cancer. Um, however, when you add in a progestogen, or as in Provera, you will markedly increase the risk for breast cancer. So the progestins or Provera are not a good deal, or, or should, should not be given in my opinion. If you add, there's studies from Europe uh, showing that if you add progesterone, natural bio, micronized bioidentical progesterone, then you can negate that risk for breast cancer. So, um, so I think that, the, number one, the risks for breast cancer are minimal, but they are there. However, when prescribed appropriately with micronized progesterone, pretty much a moot point. Testosterone should also be prescribed with estrogen and progesterone because testosterone is also helps to prevent uh, breast cancer. It also causes the breast to sort of involute so that um, it's not as active. So by giving progesterone and testosterone, I think you can pretty much do away with the risk for breast cancer and, um, and allow women to enjoy the many benefits of hormone replacement therapy.